Van Kaplan here, executive producer of Pittsburgh CLO. Thank you for joining us on Facebook Live for our close-ups, Spark the Conversation, where you can meet the artists who make our Spark Festival possible here in Pittsburgh. For 75 years, the Pittsburgh CLO has been bringing people together to celebrate musical theater, and we will again soon. All of us at CLO hope that you and your loved ones are safe and managing these difficult times. We look forward to seeing you again at the theater. Hi, everyone. Hello, and welcome to our first ever broadcast of CLO Close Ups Spark the Conversation. I'm Olivia O'Connor. I'm the manager of New York Development at Pittsburgh CLO, and it is Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, which means we are live. We have two guests to introduce to you today. I'm so excited to welcome them. But first, since this is our first ever broadcast and live stream, I want to give you a little bit of information about what to expect in the coming weeks. So every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern, we will be live on Facebook from my living room for Spark the Conversation. We're going to be catching up with alums from Pittsburgh CLO's new musicals initiative. We're going to chat. We're going to have a little show and tell. We're going to have time for questions from those of you watching live, and we're going to wrap up with a fun list of five. It's a 30 minute broadcast, so it's a great time for a mid afternoon coffee break. And then every Thursday at 5 p.m. for happy hour, join Mark Fleischer, CLO's producing director for Cocktails and Conversation. He's going to be chatting with CLO performer alums, folks based both here in Pittsburgh and all around the country. And he's also going to be chatting with staff members about what they've been working on from home. Both of these shows are going to be recorded and shared to CLO's YouTube page and to our website. So if you are joining us belatedly on YouTube, hello, and thanks for joining us. Uh, I hope all of you watching at home, whether you have been at home or whether you need to be out and about working, are staying safe and healthy. Um, obviously, many of us are in isolation of one kind or another right now. And especially for those of us in the theater industry, which is so much driven by collaboration and by being in the same room together, these are really strange times. We are really looking forward to being back in the same space with all of you really soon. But in the interim, we are really grateful that we can use the, the magic of technology to connect with some folks who we haven't seen in a while. So that brings me to today's guests. In just a moment, we are going to welcome the writing team of Up and Away, Kevin Hammonds and Kristen Baer. Kevin is the book writer lyricist, Kristen is the composer, and they are a fantastic first guests for the show because their history with CLO really tells the story of our New Works program in a great way. In 2017, their show Up and Away was featured in our New Musicals Weekend as a reading. The following year in 2018, it's a world premiere production in the CLO Cabaret, that's what you're seeing B-roll from right now, was featured as the presentation in our Spark Festival of New Musicals, the inaugural festival. And of course, all the shows that we develop at CLO, we want them to go on to long lives after us. And we are so proud that Up and Away earlier this year, had its second production at the Broadway Rose Theater Company in Tigard, Oregon. So we are so proud of Kevin and Kristen. We love them. And we are so grateful that they chose to be our first guests. So let's welcome them. Hello, Kevin Hammonds and Kristen Bear. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, it's so good to see your faces. You too. Hello, how are hello. you? Good. So I do want to ask, I want to ask, how are you? And also, where are you right now? Well, uh, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, actually in Manhattan. I'm a block away from wow. Columbia Presbyterian Hospital, which is a little uh, loud, which you may hear um, during this broadcast because sirens go by quite often. But I'm good. I'm hunkered down with my family and uh, we're making a go of it. And this is the new normal. Yeah. And how many humans or animals in your household right now? There are four animals and no humans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are there are two adults, uh, me and my husband, and then there is one six-year-old boy, and there is one twelve-year-old dog. Great. So uh, we're 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 full. Yes. There's no room at the end. <laughs> and Kristen, where are you, and how are you right now? I'm in Philadelphia. I'm fine. Um, I'm here with my husband. Um, he actually is an ER doctor, but in mm -hmm. Philadelphia, it hasn't become quite as intense as it is, as it is in uh, New York City. But my kids are living together up in Boston in school. And at first they were like, well, we're going to stay up here, we think. But they're starting to get a little, uh, you know, 
stir crazy so <laughs> they might actually end up coming on which i would really love um but we're all fine right now so oh, good yeah i'm glad i'm glad yeah this this is causing a lot of unintentional family reunions uh yeah. which is which is hopefully good hopefully good hopefully we'll all be better bonded uh, at the yeah. end of this quarantine yeah, it's great. And one of the what we're trying to remember is that uh, although homeschooling is a challenge every minute of the day, uh, what's great is that we get to sit at a dining table and have dinner together and we get yeah. to have lunch together around the table and we get to play. And so it's, you know, it's certainly been more time than I've ever had in one collective chunk to spend yeah. with my son. So that's I'll take it. Oh, good. Yay. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about Up and Away. Um, we're going to zoom back in time to 2017 and in April 2017. So really, we're celebrating almost the three year anniversary of uh, this show at CLO and of, of meeting each other back in 2017. Uh, first, I want to hear how long you were working on Up and Away before it came to CLO, because we always remind people the new musical development process is a long one. Uh, so talk to us a little bit about how long you've been working on the show before you came to CLO and what brought you to CLO in 2017. You, Kristen, you're nodding your head as if to say, go ahead. Um, you, can, <laughs> you can start and then I will. Okay. Uh, I go to Kristen, but I defer to Kristen because she's better with dates. Uh, I know we had our first reading, our first kind of official reading in October of 2014. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's pretty yep. impressive, right? Yeah, it's a long, it's a long time. Uh, so, and we were writing it about two years prior to that. Yeah. Uh, that is an absolute guess. So I, that could be wrong. But the first official reading was 2014. Um, so it's been a while, but, you know, not as far yeah. as musicals go, not too long. Um, Kristen? And this show came in through Mark, correct? You, you, you two had connected with our producing director, Mark Fleischer. We had had uh, the Ronak character. We had an actor play that for that reading and in the developmental process that we just went through um, up in New York, Bruce Sabbath. And he said, you know, I know this theater that might be a good fit for this. And so he made the first contact with Mark. And then we met Mark after one of the NAMT festivals. And uh, we talked with him and he said, well, I'm working on this festival. It's coming together. We're not quite ready yet, but I'll let you know. And then lo and behold, not that long later, he said, we're going to do it. And I said, great. So we were really very excited to be chosen and a part of the, the first new musicals weekend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, was, it, was, it feels like it was decades ago. And yet it wasn't that long ago. Uh, yeah. But I feel like I've, I've known you both for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing, not a bad thing. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Uh, and then you've been working on the show a lot uh, in the interim. So, so we had that week-long reading in 2017, and then we knew we were going to produce the show in 2018. And we did a pre-production workshop uh, that winter, two weeks in Pittsburgh. And yeah. then we did, of course, rehearsals leading up to the production here in Pittsburgh. And then I know you've also done big rewrites to the show leading up to the second production at Broadway Rose. And so two questions for you, and it's a lot because we're talking about you know a, a three year time span, but I would love to hear both some of the big changes that have happened in the course of those three years of development. Uh, and I'd also love to hear a little bit about what motivates those changes. So not just what, but why, you know, did you learn something in rehearsal? Did you learn something by watching an audience react to the show? Did you learn something just by sitting with the material for a year and realizing something about it? Talk to us a little bit about that process. I think we learned most uh, the last three performances that we saw. We came back to Pittsburgh to see the last few performances. And I remember uh, leaning into Kristen and saying, oh, the first 20 minutes are all wrong yeah like it took workshops it took readings it took rehearsal and what how many weeks of performances for us to finally go oh i know what's wrong the first 20 minutes um and that's when that was what was very exciting about when the show finished in pittsburgh is that we knew we had our marching orders immediately um and we had this potential performance this production in uh, at broadway row so we had something that we had to get on paper immediately. Um, so we knew what we had to do. And it was, like I said, it was the first 20 minutes that was too confusing, too 
Hi, William. Can you close the door, please? <laughs> Hi, everyone. This is my son, William. Hi, William. <laughs> and my dog, Jackie. Uh, Hi, William. Hi, Jackie. <laughs> William. Can you, uh, Hi, William. Hello. I'm talking about up and away. Uh, we so anyway. So yes. We, hello. Welcome to our third guest for the day, William. Yeah, this is uh, William. <laughs> um, so... We had to clarify things in the in the first twenty minutes, mostly being um, having to do with clowns and aliens. Yes, um, which we during the CLO production we insisted were canon and we wouldn't touch, and soon discovered that bye, they were Daddy. bye, sweetheart, uh, <laughs> that we were absolutely wrong. So it was getting rid of the clowns, the circus, um, and kind of just clarifying the opening to make it clearer. And also I'll say this and then I'll let Kristen take over. Um, we opened with a very sincere country Western number and there was nothing before that number. And even though we kind of wrote the country Western number as kind of tongue in cheek, um, the audience had no indication of that that was the case. So they didn't know how to take the show. And now we open it with a very campy kind of sci-fi, uh, prologue that is ridiculous and hilarious so they know immediately what they're in for and i think that was the big learning point was kind of go oh we have to let the audience know what kind of ride they're getting on to before we go on the ride Kristen, mm -hmm. do you want to add to that well i think too one of the things that i know that i fought to a certain extent um was this is a fast-paced fun show and we do have a love story in there and I was kind of fighting writing a sort of traditional love story or love, love song for them because I was like, ah, oh, you know, it just doesn't have a, it doesn't feel right in the show. But that was another big takeaway. And actually it was partially some of the notes that Van gave us. Um, and we realized that the audience was gonna be okay because they liked these two characters and they wanted to see them get together. And it was okay to take a second for them to just have like, a fun, we're getting together sort of song. And I think it was actually probably one of the more successful things right away. That as soon as we put it in, we, we read it in front of our team of people that were at CLO with us are, you know, Reed Thompson, Marlo Hunter, um, who else is there? Rainy Rowan was there, like a bunch of people who had worked with Frank and Matt or orchestrators. And they're like, yes, this is what it needed. So that was the other thing that really kind of because of what we saw in, in CLO, we came around to knowing that, okay, this is something that our show needs and it's okay to take a second to do this. Yeah. Also, I don't know if you know this, Olivia, but you know, when we, well, you know this part because you were a part of it. Uh, when we were working on the show with CLO, you and Mark Fleischer kept saying, now, what are the rules? How is it that one person has superhuman powers and the other person <laughs> yeah. doesn't? Where, does they, where do they come from? Uh, and as you know, initially it was because Joe got nearly abducted by a spaceship. Uh, we came to the realization that that didn't have to happen. Now they they unbury a pod in their yard that their parents have hidden that the baby alien came to in the pod and they find a pair of gloves in the pod yes, and that's what gives them power. Yes. Uh, and it's so much simpler and so yes. much clearer and, and it just answers everything that we need to know. And it only took two to three years to figure that out. And plus, yeah. it allows us to introduce another trope, because our show is all about playing around with the tropes and, oh, why does he wear a skin-tight suit and why does he have a cape and everything? And so it's just one more, like, those gauntlets. It's one more thing that we could introduce and have fun with. Oh, that's great. Yeah, well, it does. I mean, it is. it points to the fact that with musicals, especially when there are so many pieces that you can't really register until you're seeing them in space with people, with orchestrations, and with an audience, yeah. uh, you learn a lot from the first production. I think there's sometimes a, a perception that the first production is is it, and, and you freeze and you're done. No, wow. definitely not. <laughs> and so, and I also wanna say, you know, thinking about the future of this show, because I'm really excited to see these rewrites. I didn't get to see it uh, in Oregon, and I'm, I'm very excited, and I, I'm very excited to see it at some point in the future when we can all be back in a room together laughing because it feels like that's something to look forward to and, and something that is really special about this show is just how much fun and heart and love is, is in Up and Away. Yeah, we were thinking about just the other day that exact same sentiment. We were like, when this is over, people are gonna want to go into a theater and laugh and 
cheer and see something joyous and fun. Uh, and now it's just the question of when is the right time to introduce that and to reach out to producers without saying, hey, so right. I'm sorry that you're, the world is crumbling before you, but will right. you produce our show? <laughs> but, um, it's tricky. Well, we're putting, we're putting it out into the world right now. We're saying yeah. that this is a great show for, for yeah. the future. And, you. and you have another project in process too that I want to chat about. So you have another show, Dear Shirley, uh, that just recently won a NAMP grant for development, future development at Philadelphia Theater Company. So first of all, congrats on that. So exciting. And, and tell us a little bit about that project and a little bit about how you're continuing to work on it uh, during this time. You're used to working remotely, you're in different cities. But I also know that our routines day to day have changed a lot. Uh, so talk to us both about what that show is and, and how you've adjusted to working on it right now. Sure. Um, well, it is ba well, I'll tell you exactly what it's about. Uh, it's an, called Dear Shirley. It's an intimate story of the unraveling of a woman's eight year marriage to a man and the blossoming of her new relationship with a woman as told through a series of letters to another cherished friend. It's based on a memoir uh, by acclaimed photographer Hinda Schumann that uses her unflinchingly personal images to document her life in the early 80s. Uh, it offers a raw but often comical look at friendship, love, loyalty, and change, and follows her, Hinda, as she searches for guidance, consolation, and stumbles towards finding her own truth. Um, so it's just, it's a coming of age story to an extent, and it's about this incredible woman that we were both really, really fortunate enough to get to know and fall in love with ourselves. And we, it's a beautiful book called Dear Shirley, if you want to pick it up. And we hope to use her images from the book and uh, we're very excited about it. Kristen, anything you want to add? Yeah, it was, uh, it was funny because the way that we found it was that I was eating my cereal, reading the, the paper in uh, 2018, 19, 2018. And I saw an article on the on the book coming out, and I thought, this is really interesting. And I liked it because Hinda actually is a very, she's got a great personality. She's very funny, but she's also really good at mixing the profound and the mundane in this very original way. And so I sent it to Kevin. He said, I think this sounds great. And I found out that she had a book reading the next night. So oh, wow. I went to the book reading and I was, it was mostly a lot of people that she knew and I stood out a bit, maybe because I'm tall also. And she was like, <laughs> hello. I'm like, hi. And so started to talk to her about it and uh, she was open to doing it. And then, you know, we ended up a month later in her beautiful back garden and talking to she and her wife. And it's just, it's been a lot of fun. And it's of course, very different than up in a way, which is fun for us because it's just a different flavor of the type of things that we can write. So we've been having a great time with it. Awesome. And that brings us to the segment of the show that I am most excited about, Show and Tell, uh, which we're gonna, we're gonna turn things over to Kristen in just a moment. But before we do, I wanna mention to those of you watching live on Facebook that after Show and Tell, we're gonna have time for some questions uh, for Kevin and Kristen from all of you. So if you have something that you would like to ask, you can type it right into the comment section on Facebook and we'll pull some of those questions uh, after we're done. So Kristen, what are you showing and telling us today? I'm gonna play a song from Dear Shirley and it's in the beginning of the show um, and it's called Hinda because that's the name of our main character and the, the name of the, the memoir or the woman who wrote the memoir and lends the pictures. And it finds her in her basement, uh, contemplating her life and going through boxes and finding pieces or trying to find pieces of herself that she's kind of lost in the many years that she's been married to her husband. Great, so, let's so. hear it. All right. There's a handprint of a turkey and my baby shoes in bronze. Love this black eyed Pete Picasso from third Grade. Thought I threw away the yearbook and this pair of book and swans, but I'm glad I kept this Afghan mom crocheted. I found my skates and Bobby's plates, a stick of Wrigley's gum, and yet what's become of Hinda? There's photography from college when I really hit my stride, plus an old guitar I I 
while I somehow lost myself along the way. I kept a mug, a tattered rug, and books with shattered spines. But then lost all signs of Hinda. Be smart and throw it out, let the clutter go. sharing and for braving uh, the perils of playing and singing live via live stream. You're a hero. <laughs> thank you. And, and can I say that's the best it's ever sounded. Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so excited about this show. I can't wait to see a reading of it when we're when we're able to be back in the same space again. Thank you. Well, we'll uh, let you know when um, we're going to have to reschedule it, um, obviously, but hopefully right. we'll be able to let you know soon. Yay. And Kevin Hammonds, what are you going to show and tell today? Well, gosh. First of all, if can we all stand up to see we're all wearing pants? <laughs> Is everyone wearing pants? Yes. Okay. I'm not. Uh, but I, <laughs> I'm wearing shorts, though. I oh. wanted to introduce Jackie O. Yay! Our cute little doggy Jackie O. And when did you get Jackie O? We got Jackie O. She's 12 years old. Oh. So we got her 12 years ago. Um, and she, um, before we got William, she hated children. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, when we were doing the home study, when we were trying to adopt and we were like, what are we going to do with Jackie? Should we hide her? What should we do with her? Um, cause she hated kids so much. And as soon as William came, well, the first day she was like, what the, uh, <laughs> By the way, can I cuss on, on one of these? I don't know. I don't know what the rules are. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but now she's his best friend and she adores him. Uh, and I'll take you, I was gonna introduce you to William, but you've already met him. Uh, <laughs> but I'll just show you what we do in the afternoon. So, keep, so all morning, oh, hi, what are you doing? What are you doing? Do you wanna say anything? No. Hi, William. Okay. Oh, uh, what, what? Where is your foot? Thing? Where, where, where's my foot thing? I don't know what that means. Sorry, guys. <laughs> this is my show and tell, right? You're a busy man. <laughs> where's my foot thing? Let you put it on your feet. Oh, I don't know. Dry. Oh, I don't know. I'll come out in a few minutes. No. Richard, can you, can you think, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my show and tell. That was a great show and tell. That that was like that was the reality show show and tell. That Just was, thirty all minutes all right now. Just thirty minutes. That's all I ask. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's my show. Thank you. Thank you for for introducing us to Jackie O and to William. William know. was going to be on this show regardless of of whether you you wanted to show and tell, but we love exactly. Him. Well, exactly. Uh, wonderful. Well, thank you both. 
that concludes our show and tell segment, everybody. Oh, good, good, good. And uh, I hear that we have a question from our audience. Uh, can we, oh, it's, there it is. Brian Pope, hi, Brian. Brian is a friend and he's actually a script reader for CLO. So hi, Brian. Hi. Have you watched the TV show Smash? If so, how accurately does it capture the process of developing and producing a new musical? Have you two watched Smash? Yes. We have, we yes. obsessively watched it while we were Riding up and away. It was really? about the exact same time. Yeah. Does uh, it accurately capture the process? Of not at all. <laughs> not at, although, although I will say it, it kind of does now. Like when we were riding up and away, we were like, "This is not it at all." But uh -huh. in the first episode, the two writing team says, "Hey, I have an idea for a musical. Let's write a musical about about Marilyn Monroe." Ring, ring. Hey, we got a Broadway show. <laughs> we like have it like that, which. Yeah, never ever happens. But <laughs> oddly enough, Dear Shirley kind of got traction long before we were finished with the draft uh, with P PTC. So I yeah. guess it is slightly accurate. Although I've never known anyone, and I've never poisoned anyone with a smoothie. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, I forgot about that. You remember that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's at all accurate, uh, but it's entertaining. Yeah, everything that just seemed to happen with such ease on there is just so not true. Um, so yeah, so that was the kind of grading part of like, everyone don't don't look at this as like what it happened, because it's just it's a lot of, I think the one thing that might be true, at least from what I was thinking about is the musical theater world is small. And so how you treat people and the connections that you make and those relationships are important to your success. Yes. So, you know, like the fact that the writers worked together, but also had some teams that they relied on that they really enjoyed. Um, I think that's that's pretty accurate. But also we were lucky enough to have an amazing director, um, which on that show, he was, you know, sleeping around and doing all sorts of crazy stuff, so. Yeah. Which Marlo Hunter never made me sleep with her. <laughs> Yes. Never asked. Never even right. asked. Yeah. Mar Shout out to Marlo Hunter. Hi, Mar <laughs> Marlo Hunter. Uh, the thank new you mom. for that question, Brian. That was a great question. That's a great I, question. I have to say, I uh, love that on Smash there's a dramaturg, a, free, a seemingly freelance dramaturg who has a lake house and an apartment in New York. That that That's aspirational as a dramaturg for me. That's yeah. something to work towards. Well, like the writer, I remember the writer's kitchen, and I could show you my kitchen, and it, <laughs> not that. It's not yeah. that. And we have one more question from our audience, from Chris Kovis. Hi, Chris. How long have you two been working together? Have you written or developed other musicals, either together or apart? So we've talked about Up and Away. We've talked about your working together on Dear Shirley. Talk to us about your other projects and how long you've been uh, collaborating. I can address that, and then you can talk about Charles. Um, I, I always have to be in control. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, we met at the BMI workshop, which is uh, an awesome sort of uh, learning experience for uh, new musical theater writers. And we were paired together for the first assignment that we did together. And we really enjoyed the process. So when it came time to choose someone for to do a project together for our second year in the BMI workshop, we chose each other. So we've been working together since 2010. Um, wow. And We've worked on some smaller musicals that have been produced, like short musicals that have been produced in New York. And we've worked on some side projects as well. We've had two small commissions uh, and we've done that, but Kevin had a relationship previously to mine. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I worked with a composer, Charles Miller, uh, out of, who lives in London. And we had a, a kind of a deal with London School of Musical Theater. So we've written quite a few that, um, Four are published at Rogers and Hammerstein, so you can perform them at your theater and your school. Uh, we've had uh, a Brenda Bly, Teen Detective, When Midnight Strikes, Hope, uh, and Mr. Christmas all done professionally, and uh, are now it's now available for uh, performance through Rogers and Hammerstein. Awesome. And Kristen, all of your projects have been with Kevin. Um, the, the major ones have been with Kevin, although I had super fun time with another CLO writer, um, Sarah Ziegler, who was doing Just Between the All of Us. Yeah. We were commissioned by uh, University of California, Irvine to participate in a 15 minute musical project with 
where we had to pick like dodgeball style their theater students and then we had to write a musical in a very short time for the group of them oh, and wow. we are it was called dustin gavin's pi and it was about a boy band detective agency <laughs> um and we had a great time so love sarah we we had a wonderful time oh yay thank you for your question chris i appreciate that chris is one of our board members uh, so we are at our half an hour, so I want to wrap up, but I know we might have some other questions coming in, so we'll take a look at those on Facebook after and answer if we can. Um, Kevin and Kristen, before we wrap up, we have a segment that is shared across both close-ups uh, live streams called Thank You Five. Oh, oh nice. And thank nice. you for that graphic, uh, Steph Barletto, <laughs> our wonderful graphic designer. Uh, so thank you five is what we say. Five minutes before a show, a stage manager says five minutes to places. Everyone says thank you five. Uh, so the stage manager knows that everyone heard. And five is also a very special number to us in New Works because most of the new musicals that we develop have casts of five actors or fewer. Oh, yeah. uh, so on Thursdays, thank you five, Mark is going to be asking five questions. On Tuesdays, thank you five, we are going to do lists of five. And they're going to be different each week. And if you have suggestions for future lists, uh, please let me know in the comments. So this week's list, uh, which both of you will have the opportunity to answer and give us five things for, is a very important question, which is what food or beverage items have you been eating or drinking the most since you started staying home? Who wants to go first? Kevin, you can go. Okay, thank you. Uh, number one, Coke Zero. <laughs> Coke Zero. Yeah. I said this morning that I wasn't going to do three a day, but before the broadcast, I'm like, I'm doing three. I'm doing three. <laughs> so Coke Zero, uh, smoothies in the morning. I have a smoothie every morning. Oh, that's nice. That's, that's healthy. healthy. Uh, these, Heath coffee minis. bars. Heath oh. minis. Popcorn. Ooh and ice cream. Nice. Is the popcorn microwave popcorn or stovetop popcorn? Stovetop that I make yes, myself. Yes, that's the way to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kristen, what are your five items? Um, mine are Diet Coke, which I have to tell you, when we were in Pittsburgh at CLO, Kevin and I were both off the Coke train completely, <laughs> and we are <laughs> back on in a big way. Uh, so Diet Coke, um, I would agree with popcorn because it's like the last thing you have as a snack in the closet before you actually have to go out and get something. Yeah. So uh, popcorn, actually like food I've made myself, which is kind of, I mean, that's just a general category of like, my husband's going like, wait, you're cooking again? Oh my gosh. <laughs> So um, that, and I'm trying to think what else. Um, yogurt at like, boring. I know, I know, kind of boring. And like frozen vegetables because, you know, I'm trying not to shop too often. So I got to right. like reach into the freezer. That is yeah. the status list I've ever heard of. I know. <laughs> there's, no, there's no judgment there in is. the thank you Absolute five judgment. list. What? I is did that? chocolate bars, ice cream, <laughs> soda. I, did I didn't know this would be such a cutthroat segment, well, but I, you know, I look forward to us. <laughs> <laughs> to future editions. Um, yeah. Kevin, Kristen, I cannot thank you enough for being the first in this experiment. Thank you for taking time out of your days, especially during this crazy time, to chat with us and to catch up. Uh, you're the best. We can't wait uh, to see what you do next. And we'll see you soon, I hope. Well, thank you. We you're the best, Olivia. Much. We uh, miss you. you too. We, we absolutely. We love CLM, we love you, and thank you so much. Thank you, thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Bye, Kevin and Kristen. Bye. And thank you all so, so much for joining us. We will be back next Tuesday at three o'clock. We're gonna be chatting with the writers of These Girls Have Demons, Megan Brown and Sarah Taylor Ellis. Also remember to tune in this Thursday at five for Cocktails and Conversation with Mark. He is gonna be chatting with Clay Aiken, Keisha Lalama, and Laura Hayhurst, which is super exciting. Um, also, keep an eye on our Facebook this week because we are going to be launching a group writing project called Google Doc Musical, which I'm super excited about. We are going to be calling on all of you to become book writers, lyricists, and composers. Details on that are going to be out soon, so keep an eye out. Uh, I want to really, really, really send a huge thank you to Becca and Sid on our marketing team who have been manning this broadcast from behind the scenes. Hi, Becca. Hi, Sid. They have learned this new platform. Uh, they, along with Steph Barletta, our graphic designer, have been doing all of these video clips and the beautiful overlays that you're seeing. Uh, so thank you so, so much to them. And uh, finally, thank you all so much for supporting us by watching and by supporting the arts in Pittsburgh. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye, everybody. <laughs>